Have you ever been playing Warframe and you saw something that looked like such a bad deal or such a scam that you'd look at it and think, man, only a noob would buy that or only a noob would fall for that and spend that much time on something like that? Well, today in Warframe, we're going over noob traps. These are essentially just terrible value type things in the game. Whether that be gameplay or market platinum purchases, we're gonna go over a handful of Warframe noob traps today that are in the game. I will have chapters down below if you want to jump between which noob trap there is. If you wanna support the channel, you can always subscribe, take a look at Twitch or any of the other social medias down below, or you could use Epic Game Store creator code PUPSKER. So noob traps in Warframe are at least for the most part pretty simple. There's mainly platinum noob traps, which are just like terrible purchasable items or terrible amount of platinum purchases that you can spend, right? You spend too much money to get something pretty terrible. Simple enough. Other noob traps in the game are misconceptions people have the game, areas people spend too much time on in the game, etc, etc. So today in Warframe, we're gonna go over all those lovely noob traps, starting with the market. So the Warframe market is filled with noob traps. At the front of it, you can see like, oh, this isn't terrible. It shows off items like packs and bundles to buy, mostly cosmetic, but like some in-game non-cosmetic items. So nothing too terrible. But oh no, once you go down to bundles, Warframe has some terrible, terrible bundles. Most of the cosmetic bundles, pretty good. A booster bundle, pretty good if you're gonna play the game, go hard, but once you start scrolling down, you'll find eventually there's some bad bundles. Complete starter slot bundle, you can only get one per account. You start the game with 50 platinum, so this is always good to get if you're starting the game. But then you get down to maybe some of the essential base damage mod bundles and essential cold damage mod bundles. These bundles are terrible. Most, if not all, of these like mod bundles right here are terrible, terrible value. 75 platinum, right? Not a lot of platinum, but these are mods that you farm up casually playing the game without even paying attention. As you can see, I have 36, 7, 75, 9. I just have way too many, and I do not need to get more. So these are like terrible, terrible items in the game and terrible value, but they try to sell them as if they're like really good, right? Essential base damage, essential crit chance. Whereas like all of these mods are just normal drop mods that you can get. So never buy any of like those bundles. The Necromech mod bundle could be thought of as like decent enough value because Necromech mod bundle items are really annoying to farm. But, hey, it is what it is. Warframe has a ton of random items in the market that are terrible value. Whether that be like Sentinels, Cosmetics, what have you. Cosmetics don't matter too much. But one of the biggest one is when you go to your equipment tab and you go to just like mods and endo and just generally items, right? Forma, Aura Forma, a lot of... Warframe items in game you can farm up and you don't actually need to buy relic packs are a terrible value all in all for platinum because you just do not need to spend that much platinum just to get some sort of low tier relics and then we get to the worst possible value in Warframe they're selling resources for platinum 1500 alloy plates or 30 platinum Terrible. Never buy straight up resources from the market in Warframe, right? Control modules, one control module for 10 platinum, awful. I have 8,145, so don't do that, right? Detonite injectors, you build and uh, create them from your clan blueprint, so terrible items there. The bad essential mod bundles, ferrite and field drawn, gallium, all terrible. I would say it's pretty worthless and bad value buying greater matter or just like lenses in general, because you can just farm up a ton of them if you're playing the correct mission. So the Warframe market itself starting off in the game has a ton of noob traps and terrible value so keep that in mind stay safe in there speaking of market there's something we like to call trade chat 
This is something you actually, I believe, have to maybe enable in your settings, or maybe that's region chat. People in trade chat in Warframe will try to upsell you on items so hard all the time. You're right, you're just seeing people sell items, right? Try to buy, sell, but all the time they will sell Warframes, they will sell relics, and they will sell things you need for a very high upcharge of platinum, like 20 to 50% more platinum than you could get if you're like just looking around and haggling. So if you are going to trade in Warframe, always look around for prices, always talk to a couple people, always haggle because oh my, is there too many items in Warframe buying or selling, right? and the pricing can get weird. And that is why people like to use websites such as warframe.market so that they can get better value and better type of uh, items overall with lower platinum costs. So overall, not too bad in the trading department. You just have to be very careful because it is just up to you to get a good price and yeah, have fun with that. The next thing we have here is the foundry. The Foundry in Warframe is a very odd system that they have set up, and a lot of people don't fully utilize the Foundry to its fullest extent, creating kind of a weird noob trap. People, for some reason, sometimes think you can only build one or two items at a time in the Foundry. They think you can only build like one Warframe or one weapon or one certain part at a time in the Foundry. That is incorrect. The Warframe Foundry can create at any time any multiple amount of items at once. I can prove this just by going around and creating, building any amount of items like that, Aura Forma, Neetane, right, Eidolon lenses, I can build any amount of these, but I don't need to. And then once you're done building the items, you can just keep them in the foundry as long as you need. So this is a great thing for newer players, right? Because this is where you can store your Warframes and your weapons once you've got them built, if maybe you don't have the Warframe and weapon slots available for them yet. You can have a hundred items built up in the foundry ready to go or building at the same time ready for you to get them. And that is A-OK, -okay. so just remember to utilize the Foundry to its fullest extent. Speaking of that, Warframe slots, Orican Reactors, Orican Catalyst, everything in the game that can be purchased for Platinum, that is an in-game usable non-cosmetic item essentially, can be farmed in the game. So things to buff up your Warframe, things to buff up your weapons, and all of the slots, you can farm those in-game. It just is going to be a time-gated occasional farm, right? Warframe slots, weapon slots, reactors, forma, they all take time. Uh, weapon slots and reactors and forma, those take ages. Forma, you can build pretty much one a day, it's not that bad. But catalyst, reactors, and warframe weapon slots, those are so time-gated through things like Nightwave, occasional events, and certain blueprints with the catalyst and reactors. You can get them from running invasions occasionally. So while you can farm everything in the game and eventually catch up and have everything, it will take some time. But that's definitely a noob trap a lot of people seem to overlook, is the pure usability of the foundry and then all of the like weapons buffs and slots that you have to get and use with the foundry. So I just want to kind of include that in one big noob trap shenanigan because not a lot of people realize early on you can get auric and catalysts and reactors and like weapon slots and warframe slots. They are just time gated through in-game systems, events, and things like that. So keep that in mind. You can get them. It just might take some time. So keep weapons in the foundry, delete uh, weapons you've mastery ranked max and then don't use anymore, and then claim new ones. Use the foundry as a pseudo warframe inventory 
system before you can pick up all of your items if you need to. Just a little noob trap help there because yeah. And then you can just claim all if you need to and keep building everything. The next thing I wanted to talk about in Warframe was the open worlds. Right now in Warframe, there are three early game open worlds and that's Cetus Plains of Eidolon, cause they're like kind of a combo package, Fortuna or Valis, and there's Deimos over here and the Necrolis Cambian Drift. All of these three open worlds, I would say are pretty big early game noob traps. The only reason being is in Warframe, it is a very odd MMO where it's there's forward progression, there's linear side progression, right? And there's just a billion things you can do to technically get your account a little stronger, a little more built up, but things that you probably shouldn't spend too much time on or things you should just glance by quickly early on. And that's what I look at when I look at the open worlds. All of the open worlds have some really good mods and really good warframes and really good weapons that you can farm out of them. And they're a good goal and a good thing to run here and there and to slowly collect items on. But since you unlock the open world so early on in Warframe, you can technically spend 100 hours or like 50 hours in each of the open worlds unlocking everything and get no progress elsewhere in the game. So I just think the open worlds in Warframe are kind of a noob trap. It's a great idea to run them, to do missions on them, and to take a look. But if you're very early on in Warframe, I still think your main goal should be like taking a look and completing the story quest, the main storyline, unlocking more of the world and all of the systems, and just pretty much continuing the story while unlocking more of the star chart. Whereas the open worlds are one big condensed area that has a good amount of everything, but it's not going to progress you in Warframe itself. It's just going to progress your arsenal. So it's great to run and it's good to farm. It's just not good to spend so many hours in the open world early on when you have so many other things in Warframe to explore. So I just think these are kind of a noob trap. I've heard people before talk about how they've accidentally got stuck on the open worlds and by that I mean like they just kept farming it thinking there was stuff to do there and like uh, they needed to progress more in the open world before they could do more of the game but no that's never the case it's just open worlds are a lot to do in one small area with like a lot of missions but it's not a ton of very quick mandatory stuff so run the mission quickly maybe take a look at some of the bounties get some of the items here and there but don't spend like 50 consecutive hours on the open world because oh god you're crazy if you do that. The next noob trap I wanted to talk about is straight up mastery rank. I am legendary mastery rank 2 and a lot of new players in the game seem to think that mastery rank is what the game is all about but it really isn't. So mastery rank is essentially your account level. You gain mastery rank one time essentially by maxing out the level on a Warframe weapon companion like type of thing like that. There's there's a top like Arcwing companions uh, weapons amps. If you max something out you get mastery rank and then forming a weapon unless it's like a Kuva weapon where you can get more we levels it doesn't gain additional mastery rank. So mastery rank in Warframe is more of just a I have unlocked and leveled up all of the items in the game type counter and that's your account level. There's other stuff that goes along with it though, such as like all of the things here. You see missions completing the general star chart, uh, railjack, all give you mastery rank, but the brunt of it is warframes and weapons and leveling them. You don't need to worry about mastery rank too much. Once you hit mastery rank 16, Everything in the game is fully unlocked and you can get every Warframe and weapon with that mastery rank because certain weapons and Warframes, what have you, require a certain level of mastery rank in order for you to build them. So once you do hit mastery rank 16, you can technically unlock any item in the game. So after 16, mastery rank doesn't matter other than for like daily caps, certain conveniences, and then once you hit higher levels, you'll get some loot, resources, items, once you hit like MR30 and more, so you also just get some items. So 
Master rank in Warframe is important and it matters just don't fret on it too much. It's too much of a noob trap where people think that your master rank is the only thing that matters, where really it's more of a level up counter or like a small progress counter that just counts all the things you've leveled in the game. So it's not a big deal. Don't worry about it too much. In Warframe, since there are just a bajillion noob traps, let me know what your most known, I would say, noob traps are down below in the comment section as we're now gonna go over our one last noob trap that I wanted to talk about. This right here is the worst, most annoying, stupid noob trap in the game of Warframe. That is Darvo's Deals. This NPC piece of trash right here is named Darvo. He sits in Warframe relays and sells items at a discount at a terrible, terrible price in which nobody should really ever bother buying unless you straight up do not plan on farming that item ever in your life because you hate it or you're super lazy or you're rich or something. But he sells items at a slight discount. Instead, you can just farm the item up, no problem. I think with a heat dagger, I can easily buy a blueprint and just build it in my foundry. It's not hard at all. This thing is not worth 52 platinum. It's worth zero platinum. This is BS. He has his Darvo daily deals and they're almost always terrible weapon purchase platinum pricing that I would never recommend you do. I just wanted to talk about Darvo. He also has Clem. Clem's cool. But Darvo's shop is terrible. Never buy anything here, okay? It includes the weapon slot and the auric and catalyst, but guess what? You can just get that in the game or farm it half the time. The only redeeming thing about Darvo is the fact that it includes a weapon slot. I would never buy Orc and Catalyst because you can wait on those, farm them through invasions, drops, alerts, things like that here and there very occasionally, but hey, that's up to you. I think Darvo is evil, he is mean, and he is a scammer. But if you really think that getting a random item that you can easily build is worth it, as well as getting the slot and the Auric and Catalyst, and hey, maybe you don't consider him a scammer, but no, he is the Origin System's number one scammer. So, yep, let me know what you think your major noob traps are. Maybe I'll make another video because Warframe has a ton of things you could consider noob traps, right? So, let me know what you think of the video. Subscribe and like the video. Comment down below if you had fun. Take a look at my Twitch. Any social medias in the description of the YouTube video. You can join the YouTube membership, join, sub on Twitch, or if you really want to support the channel, you can buy anything on the Epic Game Store. Use Epic Game Store creator code PUPSKER and it helps out. Warframe, Genshin Impact, Fortnite, any game. If you use my creator code and you do end up like spending money, it helps out. So I appreciate it. Thank you all. I will see you next time. Peace.